This is the Convene Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Convene Talk, where we discuss interesting stories that appear in our popular newsletter, News Junkie. My name is Magdalena Tanasova, Digital Media Editor at Convene. Today, actually, it was my turn to select an article, and I chose Fast Company's article titled How Managers Can Tackle the Most Common Employee Struggle, which for me, surprisingly, was mental blocks. And uh, <laughs> that's my dog. <laughs> And dogs don't have mental blocks, but we do. And the authors of the article describe mental blocks as the feeling of being stuck and unable to move forward with a task or project. And they also speak about how that can reflect into the bottom line of companies and that mental blocks carry emotional, financial and productivity costs. I've always believed that's a very common thing we all accept, especially in jobs like ours as writers. And of course, if I'm professionals have have to do a lot of creative tasks, and I'm sure that that causes them mental blocks. But interestingly, in the article, they said that 4% have never experienced a mental block at work. And I just want to meet those 4% out of <laughs> 2000 people. I mean, who are they? <laughs> and the article actually took a turn into seeing how leaders can help their employees with mental blocks. And one solution was taking breaks, which we discussed in our last episode. I think that's nice. I mean, yes, breaks always help. And sometimes you have to push through it, like some of the respondents said they did. What do you guys think? What did you find interesting in, in the article? This is Barbara, deputy editor. You know, I was actually floored by the statistics that I think it was like 77% of people said they lost hours of time weekly and some, like it was a really big percentage of daily. And it reminded me of the original title of Brene Brown's first book was I thought it was just me. <laughs> and I had that experience reading this. I, well, it's probably everybody. When you feel blocked, you feel guilty about it. Like you think, this is not what I'm getting paid for, to spin my wheels and wonder what to do next. And I would say, I found it really interesting to read about hybrid work and remote work and just changes in work. And I think it's pretty well documented that the big productivity boost that came during the pandemic has gone away. And I wonder if it's because early in the pandemic, there were so many interventions to connect people. And now that, those are not as common. Because one of the things the article said is a remedy is collaboration. And I feel like the, the creative ways to collaborate that aren't just, a, you know, email is notoriously bad at expressing emotion and nonverbal communication, just ways of intentionally creating moments of collaboration and taking away the stigma of like, I need more information about this for me to move forward and not feel like you're bothering somebody to ask for that, that it's a, that you should be able to figure it out on your own. I see some nodding. Yeah. Barbara, this is Casey Gow, managing editor. And Barbara, I had the exact same reaction to you when I saw, so it says 59% of workers revealed that they experience mental blocks on a daily or weekly basis. And 27% said they spend a few hours every day managing their blocks. And that was just shocking to me because as you said, it's sort of, it's a lonely experience that you think is happening just to you. And you think, gosh, why can't I just get it together and move past this? And of course, it's something you don't really want to talk about at work because you don't want people to think, oh, She's just slacking and, you know, spinning her wheels and not moving on with what she needs to do. So to remove the stigma and hear just how common that experience is in itself 
I think is helpful. And I also think the flexibility in your schedule is something that really helps with these blocks because sometimes you have to push through, but there are a lot of instances, particularly in more creative fields where you can't push through, you can't force creativity or your best work. And so I think having some sort of, you know, as you said, a remote or hybrid setup for work where you can kind of work at your own pace and allow yourself those breaks when you need them is really key to pushing past it. This is Kurt White, digital editor. One of the few things that I see as a positive about working in the office is that when you have that kind of a block, you do have the option to, you know, look across to your desk mate or go down the hall or even just get up and do a spin around and either ask somebody a question specifically about this thing or, you know, it's just another form of a break. Say hello to somebody, you know, like instead of getting the, the water out of the uh, refrigerator closest to your desk, you go around to the other side of the office and do that. So you end up running into other people. That's what I found that I like about being in the office, which I don't love being in the office, but that is the collaboration in that way is really helpful. But I was surprised by those numbers as well, because that seems to be a whole lot of wheel spinning and people not really doing a lot of work. I have a question for you. Have you ever went to your manager or a coworker, even not even, you know, it doesn't have to be a manager, but the coworker and said, you know, I'm struggling with the mental block. Has it happened? I don't think I've said, help me with this mental block, as opposed to whatever the mental block was, you know, that I just said, I'm really having a hard time starting this story. Explain X to me, you know, and maybe it's somebody, maybe it's one of our organizers, our meeting organizers or something. And, you know, she'll just lay something out for me and I go, ah, you know, and ding, you know, it comes or, you know, anything sort of like that, or even just asking somebody else about you know, I, so I don't think I go, oh, I'm having writer's block. When I do that, it's more of complaining and not a let's try to get over this writer's block. But Kurt, I think among our own team, we sometimes talk to each other about that. And it's helpful because sometimes it can be a conversation like, I don't really understand the best way to start off this story. What have you been doing for yours or if right. you've been struggling with yours? That's true. That's true. Yeah. And that leads to more conversation about, you know, methods mm -hmm. of how to get started. Right. Hi, this is Jen Deans, senior editor. So I was just going to say, I kind of feel differently. Like I feel like mental blocks are a natural part of the creative process. And I'm not sure everyone can identify the same way if, if your, your job or your what you do is different, but I've only ever been a writer. So I only know that. <laughs> and I feel like anyone who's ever written anything or done anything creative of any kind knows that it's a natural part of the process. So I'm, when I was reading the article, I was like, well, no, duh. Like, <laughs> like it wasn't a surprise. I was kind of like, is this news? It's not news to me, but I kind of feel like, I mean, if you're not experiencing that, there's probably, you're probably not challenging yourself enough. You know what I mean? Like I can't, I, I experience it every day with every project at some point. And I feel like when you expect it and you know, it's just part of the process, it's maybe a little less of a block because you know, you're just going to get over the hump eventually. I try not to read into it too much. or think about it too much, but I would say I'm really like open about it. I tell Michelle, our editor in chief for those listening all the time, if I have a mental block all the time. <laughs> like I'll send her a story and I'll be like, I couldn't think of how to finish this. Can you help me? And she'll help me. I'm not shy about it, but I, I wouldn't necessarily do that with every boss. There are other editors that I've worked with in the past that I would definitely not do that with, but I feel like she's pretty kind about it and understanding, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like it's just a natural part of the process. And I feel like walks, talking with others, reading, there's like just ways to kind of get over it, but I just kind of expect it at this point. The article goes into how managers can help people come overcome mental blocks. And I mean, Jen just described one way, but I think writers, that's a special relationship, the writer and the editor. 
and it's different. I don't know. It seems like almost a personal thing in a lot of ways that you just have to find your way through it, you know? And I mean, maybe that's not true. Maybe I, I just imagine other bosses that I've known, you know, that I'd be like, no way am I telling them this. But, you know, Michelle, I would too. Something I just have to do myself a lot of times. I just have to get over it myself. I think you're right in terms of other jobs and saying out loud that you are struggling with a project because of this grind culture. So admitting that you're not moving on with your project is tough, especially for event planners where they have such a strict schedule before an event. And again, the timelines have shifted. So planners have a bit more time before the event. Yeah, I can definitely see how event planners can struggle admitting that they are having a mental block with the part of their project and speaking with a senior person who expects the money, you know, he or she expects uh, efficiency, which is very, very difficult in the in the world of events. Or if they're their chief collaborators or partners from other companies, like people they have to work with and have to appear that they have it all together, you know? And, Correct. You know, I, I guess it would be easier if they had more planners on their teams that they could say, hey, you know, let's work through this or a mentor somewhere else. But I think that would be really hard working with your collaborators who were not at your same company, you know, or with people you're working with, like a hotel or whatever, AV people or whatever, you know, it just seems like that would be really difficult. Or if you're working with people who are part of that 4% who never experienced it long term, <laughs> <laughs> that would be rough. No, I would be, t- I would be, I would be tapping them all the time saying, how, how do you do this? <laughs> you know, I just keep thinking about the, that idea of psychological safety. I have a long tenure at different jobs and I can just look back and I can just see the places where I could just go in and say, oh my gosh, I soared. And then the places where you're wringing your hands and, oh, I said the wrong thing. You're just, you know, you're not soaring. So I just love the idea of normalizing this thing that everybody apparently except for four percent go through and helping each other through it and not being embarrassed by it and understanding what rewards are on the other side for it being okay to say i need something more to to do this love that (laughs) thank you all for this (laughs) nice conversation and hopefully we'll have fewer mental blocks working together through them (laughs) and for our listeners if you enjoyed this episode remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and until next time